Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars Colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode, I just wanted to start off amusing about our hive of activity around Mars here now. And also the fact that our Mars sats are all sort of all on one side there, so I should probably reposition those. There is one over here. But for now, we are doing crewed missions, so it's not too bad. We need to take care of that lander currently around Deimos and bring it back to our uh, Mars Transfer Vehicle 2. After that, we can take care of Mars Transfer Vehicle 1, which is arriving at Earth. And then I have a launch to do with an experimental Nerva stage. So hopefully we'll get to that. But first, the lander at Deimos. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is break orbit from Deimos, and that does not take a whole lot of effort. So here we go. Just a little bit of a puff. Oh, no, God, no, you're already doing too much. Um, that direction will be fine. And we'll try and get all this, well, this tiny little bit of Xenon back onto the Mars Transfer Vehicle as well. Okay, well, that should have done it. Let's see. We need to make sure that this doesn't have that inclination problem that we had before, so let's get it out. And check on that. It seemed like switching to Mars Transfer Vehicle 2 and coming back to it would solve the problem. Or going to the tracking station and come back, coming back. Okay, 3.57 with respect to it. And it seems to not be changing. Orbital period's not changing, so I think we're alright. Oddly enough. Okay, so I'll plot for a rendezvous with MTV2. Oh wait, I spoke too soon. It's now at 3.59, and yeah, okay, it's changing. All right, we have the same problem. I'll go to something else and come back to it. Okay, so the solution I'm going with will consist of a small burn initially to bring our orbit down a bit to the apoapsis of Mars Transit Vehicle 2, which is lower than Deimos. Uh, so we have tangency there, and then we have another burn that's 282 there, and then we have a relative speed of 410, let's say. Uh, with uh, a pretty big separation, but we'll close in. That's where our orbit is fairly slow, so it's not going to take too much to close in like that. All right, so, um, wait. Oh, we're going to encounter Deimos again if we do this? Hmm. That, well, I mean, the periapsis is mild, and presumably everything else already takes that into consideration, so, alright. Well, uh, I'm worried that it's going to mess up my inclination again, though. Uh, only by not actually bringing orbit down. Okay, well, I'll uh, keep an eye out for it. Somebody had asked why I uh, use Smart ASS more often than SAS. Um, and I use them interchangeably, but possibly because of the bigger buttons. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, and of course there are more options, but bigger buttons probably has something to do with it. They both have their quirks. And that's more or less what I had plotted. Let's just... Keep an eye on that relative inclination, it seems to be fine. Let's check on our crew. 24% stress, 8% radiation. Seems like stress is gonna be the bigger problem. We're gonna have to get them more living space next time. That'll be a bigger problem than the radiation, it seems. I mean, we've basically left them in space around Mars, which has more radiation exposure than leaving them on the surface. So, once we get surface bases actually going, that should be even better on the radiation. Nope. Oh. Okay, the minimum was higher than I thought it was going to be, but that's okay. Um, maybe we can do something down here to resolve that a bit. 
Okay, we're going to do a minor correction over here to just make sure that we minimize how much relative speed we have up there. Okay, I think we actually still have the inclination issue. So I'm going to pop back over there because this burn started to... Yeah, and it's... Hold on, let me turn off the RCS. And you can see the relative inclination going up all on its own. And you can tell even by the closest approach distance going up. Yeah, see? Okay, well, anyway. Peculiarities. That probably cost us a bit of Delta V. No wonder is the original burn didn't quite get as close as I thought it was gonna. Okay, it appears to be stable now. But we need another correction to help our situation. Okay, eight kilometers, very good. I'm not gonna stop it from spinning. We'll just head over there. I assume this whole deal would produce some gravity. Not a whole lot, but some. Interesting spin we've got going here. I think it probably would be imperceptible, of course. The fuel left in the lander should be enough for docking. So we won't have to transfer fuel to it. Okay, well that'll get us in render range in 48 minutes. Earth and Venus over there. Okay. We have slowly closed in. Very slowly. And now, I'll double check here. We do still have the fuel to dock. That's fine. This is on trajectory that will not hit the station. That's our Mars transfer vehicle too. So that's okay too. Okay, so first the crew, obviously. We'll worry about the tank later. In this case, of course, uh, SAS has no equivalent function to negative parallel. Which is going to handle the rotation, making sure I'm facing in the right rotation while I handle the translation. Okay, we have docked with the crew, which is the important bit. And so let's just make sure we transfer them into a nicer habitat. I mean, I assume it just sums up all the habitat stuff anyway, but... On the off chance that there's a difference, might as well. Okay, so that is done. This fuel is still locked, that's good. Okay, well, now the fun part again. Separating off the back end, attaching that uh, xenon tank, and then... Uh, probably transferring some of the tugs fuel in here so that we, well, maybe we'll just leave the tugs fuel alone so that it can be used for later missions. But, okay, um, yeah, we'll separate from here. Okay, I'm gonna park it right here. I think that's a good enough distance to slip the other bit in. That should be good enough. Okay, so we need to control from this end. And I would like to aim for that docking port there. And we'll use that negative parallel function since we're not going very fast right now. If we're going fast, we'd have to close in first. Yes, disassembling and reassembling your Mars transfer vehicle around Mars. I don't think NASA would be thrilled with this idea, but it works.
Might be necessary too, you never know. Could have left myself a little bit more room. Okay. Connect. Oh no. Come on, connect, connect. There we go. Alright. Well, that tank is back on. It's mostly empty, but I don't like it just hanging around Mars or anything. I'll leave the fuel in the tug in the tug, I think. I mean, it's valuable fuel, it could be used, but I think we'll be alright. And the tug could be of more use for the next mission, so... Though they're also fairly light, so it's not hard to bring more of them. I mean, empty mass-wise. Obviously, most of their mass is the fuel. Okay, propulsion module. Let's target. Um, does that look like we're rolled right? Yeah, it does. Uh, though, I guess LV-180 as well. Okay, good. Proceed. Now with Nerva, it's not just that its ISP is less than that of ion engines, of course. Nerva is a little bit heavier than these combined. And uh, that's just one Nerva, the nuclear engine. It's about 10 tons, 11 tons. These combined are about 7.5 tons, 7.75 tons, or 7 tons, let's say, 7 tons. Um, but it's also the fact that the propellant tanks for Nerva are heavier because hydrogen is not very dense, needs large tanks for very small actual reaction mass. So that gets irritating, but we'll see what we've got. And somebody had asked about using methane as a propellant. It's possible with KSB interstellar parts, which I do intend to use, but we'll keep it to hydrogen for now, because that was the original thing to do. And also, of course, methane is not nearly as efficient. And when you use methane with, uh, you know, low tech Nerva, the, the benefits are negligible. I mean, you might as well use a Hydrolox engine instead. Um, so we would want a higher tech nuclear engine if we're going to do that. Hold on, wander, don't wander, don't wander. Okay, well, we connected. All right, so it's all back together again. And we should be correct. Uh, I mean, controlling from the right direction. And everything looks fine. Let's take a look at our vitals. Everybody's got well, some... There's some 9% radiation, but otherwise 8% radiation and 24% stress. Uh, food, two years. We were expecting the trip back in 4 and 13 days, one year, and a little bit. Uh, so that's fine. We just need to make sure that the trip back doesn't take more than a year. And then water is great. Oxygen is fine. O nitrogen is great. Lithium hydroxide is great. So no problems there. Um, we're not seeing the uh, the methylox delta V right now. It's just the ion engine delta V is 7,000, and that seems okay. And if we do want to see the methylox delta V, let's just check that. Otherwise, we'll have that tug come back in and give its fuel. So, And it's probably got about 10% of what we have here, so not trivial. 433. Um, you know what? I think I'm gonna have that tug just uh, put most of its fuel in here. I'm a little bit concerned about that. So 433 seems a bit tight to me. I'll take that fuel. So, but let me cycle all this. Now as we burn the xenon gas to exit Mars, I would expect that we would have more than that 433 meters per second. Uh, I'm looking for 600 altogether. Okay, okay, no, no, don't don't use a whole lot of fuel to turn. Mm. I'm gonna try and leave just enough for this to deorbit itself. 
Okay, final approach. All right. So now trying to get fuel out of here without just draining it completely. I think what I'm going to do is use the empty methane oxygen tank here. This is going to take a little bit of time, but at least we can get a little bit out of time and be measured about it. So I'll be back to you once I've got the fuel transfers done. Okay, I think I've transferred all I'm going to. We actually transferred more oxygen than methane because the existing tank had way too much methane. Still does, actually. But I think we'll take it as is right now and we'll deorbit the tug. Oh, we've got too much delta V left. I should have given more oxygen. Anyway, we will have to remember that for next time. But for now, I think I'll just go with it. But I'll file that away for next time. We basically only need 100 units of oxygen. And that would be fine. Mars Trans Vehicle 2 has what it has. And we are finally going to move away from Mars and to more activities around Earth, first with the arrival of Mars Transfer Vehicle 1, and then with a launch. Okay, so I'm handling a correction burn of 37.3 meters per second with Mars Transfer Vehicle 1. And that's what we've got going on here. Let me time warp. I'll continue doing the ion engine thing during time warp. Hopefully. It's tough to tell because we're not doing enough to change our orbits. Our orbit. Well, I mean, I would expect the orbital period to... Well, seems to be going. Oh yeah, now it is. All right, good. Have me worried for a sec. Okay, uh... That. And... Looks like we're, we can continue in this direction a little bit to get the periapsis even lower. Okay, so that'll be fine. And then we have a capture burn of 670 meters per second. If we check on our remaining methane and oxygen, let's make sure that that is what we have. Of course, we can use the ion engines to help out initially. Well, we'll need about 100 meters per second from the ion engines. I think we can still capture, it's just a matter of bringing it down below the moon's orbit. But I think we can do that in Earth SOI. Let me see how long we have in Earth SOI to do an ion engine burn. It says periapsis in 10 days. Where's the encounter? Encounter in seven days. So yeah, we have a few days in Earth SOI before we actually reach periapsis. So let's proceed. So... We would like to slow down, go retrograde, but... to stay away from... Uh, I guess pointing at the node there should be fine. Let me see the components of this burn that we've got here. That'll be fine. Ten units radial is not too bad. Of course, doing the maneuvers to the node and rolling and all that business probably took out a whole lot of delta V. Hopefully, these ion engine burns provide more delta V than they take in terms of turning. Not too much better. I think we might as well just go ahead and do what we need to do at periapsis. Let's see how much delta V we have left in the methane. We'll do a little bit with the ions first, of course. But we can wait for that. And we'll have to do it before we pass on the nighttime side of the Earth, of course. Otherwise that wouldn't work very well, would it? It's interesting, it seems to be increasing the delta V required. Sure, we're pointing the right way and doing the right thing. But because, I guess because of the timing, it's changing how, uh, when we would get to periapsis and I don't know, whatever. 
We'll just trust that slowing down is slowing down in this case. Okay, well, we're not going to produce any appreciable electric, I mean, uh, any appreciable ion thrust like that. KSB Interstellar manages it so it'll throttle the ion engines as necessary depending on the electric charge, so. Okay, and ignition. I suppose we do have some stored electric charge. Let me try one of the ion engines. I don't know. I, I don't... is it producing thrust? No, it isn't. See, it looks like it's on, but it's not producing thrust, so KSP Interstellar is just not taking it as long as we don't have uh, positive electric charge input. Right now, we've got a net draw of six units, so it's not going to run the iron engines at all. So this will need some serious refitting. I mean, this BE-330 doesn't have shielding on it, I don't think. And so we want a shielded version. We decided that uh, the radiation protection wasn't good enough on this. And other things like this only has one methane oxygen module. We decided we needed two on MTV2. Of course the reactor. We want to put that. And it seems like more living space will be necessary. Given the stress of our crew currently at Mars. Once we definitively capture, I'll save the rest of the methane and oxygen for turning. That's another thing. On both Mars transfer vehicles, we need more powerful reaction wheels. Can't keep using the methane and oxygen for turning all the time. Okay, we have captured. Very loose though, I don't think it acknowledges it on this map yet. Okay, now we have a KSP safe capture. And that's all I'll do with the methane and oxygen, so we'll shut those down. Now, uh, let's make sure that persistent rotation is relative rotation, dynamic Earth. Yeah, that's what we want. And SAS on then. As it steadily brings our or our orbit down with the ion engines. Uh once we pass this point here, probably not a good thing to continue that like that. So it's gonna be a number of cycles to bring it down. Right now, twelve day orbit. I don't wanna do it right now. Because, well, we're consuming, well, consuming water on the Mars Transit Vehicle 2 isn't that bad right now because we've got five years of it. But, yeah, I want to pay more attention to that rather than this. This is in a safe orbit, it's not going to accidentally hit the moon like this. And we probably need to fix some inclination stuff too. But, the important thing is that it returned. We got it back here, somehow. And Mars Transit Vehicle 1 is ready to be refit. Okay, so let's take a look at going nuclear. Okay, so this launch with the NERVA, which is currently inside this fairing here, and this is a KSP Interstellar configured NERVA, but has the normal NERVA stats, NERVA solid core fission engine, expecting 800 or so seconds of ISP, nearly around 300 kilonewtons stuff like that, about 11 tons in mass. And it is on a stage that is just the hydrogen tank from the normal Cassei rocket upper stage. So just no longer having the oxygen and it's shorter as a result, but otherwise just a hydrogen tank with the normal bottom part on it, which means that it has thrusters, RCS thrusters, but I've uh, changed them up a little bit. First of all, they're using hydrogen gas now, which will be to boil off from the main hydrogen tank. And it also has a production of hydrogen gas in case we need more. And it also can cool the hydrogen gas into liquid hydrogen if necessary using power. Uh, I don't know if this engine produces power, but we have supplementary solar panels just in case. And those may be enough. We'll see. Uh, on the top in the fairing is just a dummy mass. 
And uh, right now we are talking about carrying 24 tons in that. And we'll see how far we can fling it. This is a core alone configuration for the Cassay rocket, no boosters. And it can do this because the engines at the bottom are these ED6 engines, which are sort of slightly uh, better thrust weight ratio RS68s, if you want to think of them like, like that. And since there are five of them, it can lift off without any boosters. In fact, it can do so quite well. Uh, you can see uh, surface thrust weight ratio of 1.52. The whole mass of this is just 1,100 tons without the boosters, which means it's uh, much less massive than your Falcon Heavy. About twice as mass, and basically two Falcon cores we're talking about here. It's uh, physically much bigger, but that's because it has to contain the hydrogen, which is not very dense. I'm just going to control it manually to see how it goes and see how far we can get this 24 ton load. It's not a very heavy load, but we're trying to... Oh, no SAS, cannot engage SAS. I might have to change that. I didn't realize this stage didn't have SAS capabilities. I think you'll still have smart ASS capabilities, though. That'll be good enough for us now, I think. So, ignition. And I'll actually get that ready. Launch. Um, pretty sure I don't want just that to happen without this happening, too. Okay. Uh, I thought I had bigger plumes on these. Hmm. Strange. This, of course, isn't an SSTO, so the nuclear engine will have to complete orbit. We'll try and do as much as possible with this. We also have docking ports on this to refuel it. And radiators, just in case. Okay, separation. Separation. And ignition. Hmm. Might have to work on the plume on this thing, though. And obviously this... Oh, it's uh, it was just building up. To its purpleness. It seems like it has two plumes. Maybe that's a problem, too. 90. Still building up. 825 seconds of ISP, by the way. Oh, I haven't thralled up. Okay, 330 almost? 30? 330. Okay, fairings. Okay, that's just the dummy mass there. Gotta extend these guys. Didn't seem like we were getting any waste heat or anything. Pinkish purple plume. 20 minute burn time. Maybe I should pitch up more. I left it in a very low orbit for a 20 minute burn time. Just gonna have to do that uh, hydrolox up underpowered hydrolox upper stage thing, maybe. Pitch up a whole lot. Now, it obviously can't get to the moon with this payload, but uh, once it's refueled, it would be able to get to Mars. Well, uh, we probably don't want it to go to Mars, but it could send like 40 tons on a trans-Mars injection and maybe uh, capture itself back into uh, low Earth orbit. Not low Earth orbit, high Earth orbit, and then they'll need to be refueled and then brought into low Earth orbit again. That's complicated. I've tried that before. It's a little bit of a hassle. But we'll think about it. I mean, it should be refuelable with um, a Kasei rocket with the boosters. That's sort of why I want... Uh, remember, I wanted the rocket because we were going to have this stage. And the tank for the stage is derived from the upper stage of the rocket. They are intimately related... Well, getting perilously close to the atmosphere here. I think we can just about avoid it. 
and there's just a little bit too much of a load for it to fling to the moon. 24 tons it is. So maybe 20 tons to the moon. Alright, well, it's an orbit. Yeah, it's got a sort of constant supplementary plume apparently that I need to take care of. Um, yeah, that'll be annoying. I hate plumes. But, alright, so we've got 2,600 meters per second, which is not enough to actually get to the moon. But it would put us into a pretty high orbit, like where maybe less, still less than where Mars Transfer Vehicle 1 is. But I wanted to check on the RCS. So, it, it depletes the hydrogen gas supply pretty quickly. Okay, let's turn prograde. Uh, it's still not, even though I tried to fix it, it's still not good at turning, apparently. It's also leaking for some reason. That I don't understand. Okay, well, start production. Well, that's not what it was supposed to do. It's supposed to have constant production. Why is it only at, oh, it's still, oh, because it was using it, I see. That might not be producing it quickly enough. And it still doesn't seem capable of turning this thing. Yeah, so I'll have to tweak a few things. It just doesn't produce enough hydrogen gas quickly enough. Man, that engine needs to be fixed. Lots of stuff needs to be fixed. Well, good thing we tested it out. Anyway, so with this check minor progress towards using a Nerva engine eventually on a Mars transfer vehicle. I'll leave it here. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.